Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm here with a very yummy cake recipe which has been a hit with everybody who's tasted it. It's a flourless cake and let's have a look at the ingredients without much further ado. As you can see, we need very few ingredients. Firstly, we need butter. We need 120 grams of butter, almond meal. We're not using any flour in this recipe. We're using almond meal instead. And we have caster sugar. That's about one cup of caster sugar and a bar of baking chocolate which is about 180 grams of baking chocolate and five eggs you can see the exact measurement for all the ingredients in the description box firstly let's separate the eggs into yolks and whites Now the next step is to use the double boiler method to melt the chocolate. For this, I've taken a small saucepan, filled it with water and brought it to a simmer and placed a wider saucepan on top of this. And we are adding the butter, chocolate and the sugar into this and whisking it to make this melt into a smooth mixture. It's always better to use a double boiler method to melt the chocolate because here the steam from the simmering water in the saucepan underneath is what's making the chocolate melt. This gives you good control over the heat and prevents the chocolate from burning. And make sure to chop the chocolate and butter so that it uh, makes the melting process a bit quicker. Once it turns into a smooth mixture like this, you can turn off the flame and set aside this mixture to cool for some time. Once the chocolate mixture has cooled down, it's time to add the egg yolks to the mixture. So before you add the egg yolks, beat it up lightly and add it into the cooled chocolate mixture and give it a good mix. Now it's time to add in the almond flour. The original recipe was for hazelnut flour but I've used almond flour and it works perfectly fine. Almond flour is very easily available in most supermarkets in Australia and I'm sure it must be available in most other countries as well. And I have seen that it's also easily available on Amazon India. You'll see that the mixture is slightly thick at this point but we'll soon be adding egg whites and that's going to make the mixture a bit more runny. It's time to beat the egg whites now. Add a quarter teaspoon of salt and whisk the egg whites using a hand blender. We need to whisk the egg whites well till we get soft peaks. This may take a few minutes. Once the foam starts thickening like this, you know that it's nearly time to turn off the blender. It's okay if you go a little bit over, but then try not to overbeat the egg whites. Now it's time to add in the egg whites to the chocolate almond flour mixture. So I added one third of the egg white into the chocolate mixture and fold gently. Make sure that you don't overbeat this mixture as you don't want to deflate the egg whites. This lets the cake be light and airy. Add in the remaining egg whites in two batches and continue the folding process till you have a smooth mixture.
Grease a 24 centimeter round cake tin with butter and line the base with buttered baking paper. If you are using a cake tin of a different size, your baking times may vary. So for this, uh, what you can do is take out the cake after about 30 to 35 minutes and check for doneness using a skewer. And if you find the cake mix is still wet in the center, put the cake back in and bake for some more time. Check every 10 minutes to make sure that you don't burn the cake. I've lined the base with some baking paper and I'm greasing the top of the baking paper as well with some butter. And now let's pour the cake batter into the cake tin. Preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius and let's place the prepared cake tin into the oven. After about 35 minutes, check using a skewer if the cake is cooked through. Depending upon the size of the cake tin and the oven temperature, it can take up to an hour for the cake to be baked completely. Do not panic if you see that the cake is taking too long to bake. Just make sure to place an aluminium foil on the top of the cake if you see that the top is getting too browned. So you can see that my cake is out of the oven and out of the cake tin and took me nearly one hour. Once the cake has cooled completely, we can make ganache to frost the cake with. So for this, I've taken a saucepan and added in some water and adding in some butter and chocolate. I'll be adding the measurements in the description box. While commonly ganache is made with chocolate and cream, here we're using a recipe which uses water and butter instead of cream. Stir frequently using a whisk to make sure that the chocolate mixture doesn't get clumped up and it melts quicker. And in just a few minutes, your silky smooth ganache is ready to frost over the cake. Let the ganache cool down for some time and then we can frost the cake with it. To frost the cake, I have placed the cake over a cake tin of a smaller diameter than the actual cake so that any of the ganache that drips down falls onto the tray below. I'm using minimal frosting here because the cake itself is really rich. Using a spatula, spread out the ganache uniformly over the cake and along the sides. If your ganache is too thick and doesn't let you spread it out evenly, you can dip your spatula in a glass of hot water and wipe the spatula with a clean paper towel and then use it to smooth down the edges and the top of the cake. And now it's time to decorate the cake in any way you like. Um, I have used some gold sheets here. As it was for Ryan's birthday, I wanted to make it look a little bit more classier. Um, you get these sheets in most supermarkets here in Australia. I'm sure you would get the same on the online websites in India and other countries as well. The only thing you need to remember while using these is not to touch them with your fingers because it sticks very quickly. You can see how it's got stuck to the paintbrush here. So I always keep this paintbrush exclusively for this. And here I'm just adding some gold dust to make the cake look a little bit prettier. It's completely optional. 
Another option is to serve this with some berries and whipped cream. I hope you enjoyed this recipe video. Please do give this a try and I'm sure that this is going to be a super hit with everyone who tastes this. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to leave a comment if you happen to try this. Till I see you again with another recipe video. Take care and stay safe.